Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel and it's time. Today is the first one of the real decks that we're going to have for Exia or will be one with the legendary building. So here we go, the first commander deck and I've picked this one mainly because when I did my stream the other week, you may have seen the replay of the draft, I got this card in the um, draft and I figured, well, you've got to start somewhere, you might as well start with this one and if you watched it, you'll know what I'm talking about but if you haven't, today's deck is all around Karamex the Rat King, one and two black for a three three Phyrexian rat legendary creature. Got Toxic one, so you know, when players dealt combat damage by this creature also get a poison counter. Other rats you control have Toxic one, so rat tribal it's gonna be. Uh, when Karamex enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library, put any number of rat cards from among them into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Yeah, this is a real rat tribal deck. Um, it's probably one of the more boring ones to do to start with, but hey, I like this. So, you know, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me some feedback, let me know what I've missed out. You're going to probably, if you've played Rats for a while, you've probably got an idea what's coming. But hey, if you haven't, this is what the deck looks like. Ta-da! Or squeak, squeak! Um, anyway, just as usual, do what I usually do when I do one of my deck decks, go through the lands. We've got Cabal Coffers, we've got Cabal Stronghold, we're playing a mono black deck. You're going to have things in play to make sure you get all the things you need off these, you know. Um, and we've got more than enough swamps to make this worthwhile. We've also got Nykthos Shrine to Nyx in here, because, you know, you're going to have a lot of rat black permanents. You might as well get some extra mana from the Devotion side of things. Beyond that, um, there's a whole bunch of swamps, as you can imagine. There is also a ball to turn everything else into a swamp if we need it to. Temple of the False Gods, so give us a little bit of land ramp as we need it. Um, Rogue's Passage is in here. This is kind of key in this deck because we do want to get through with the toxic stuff where we can. Yes, it's only going to be one creature, but you know, one poison adds up to another poison, adds up to another poison, and eventually we'll get there, undoubtedly. We've also got Radiqui Tower, just to stop us discarding anything if everything gets bounced. Feel of the Dead, because we've got enough non basic black lands in the deck to make this worthwhile and get some zombie tokens as well um and then beyond that we've just got a lot of lands that go and search things out evolving wilds maestro's theater um marsh flats i've snuck in for this one you know take this out if you don't want to play it obscure storefront and down the bottom here obviously terramorphic expanse already mentioned so that's the land we're only playing 35 because i figure you know most of our cards as you can see are in the three drop slot so you know beyond that lois bloom Mox Tantalite, Soul Talisman to help ramp along with Soul Ring. And that's kind of it for the ramp. There's a couple of other cards I'll get to that do kind of class as ramp, but you know, we'll see. And then it's just rats. And we like rats. So we've got carrion rats in here. I'm um, going back to Torment to exile anything that's annoying in a graveyard. Um, Nat Miser, um, reduce all your opponent's hand sizes by one. Obviously, if they've got Reliquary Tower in play, it doesn't really matter because the hand size is infinite. So, yeah, but, you know, might hurt some control players. Gnawing Vermin, you know, get someone to mill a couple of cards. And when it dies, target creature gets minus one, minus one. Typhoid Rats, just for some death touch protection. Um, Vampiric Tutor, there's a reason Vampiric Tutor's in here. It's the only tutor I'm playing in the deck, but... I think you've probably already seen what the reason why Vampiric Chew is in here, if you can't tell. Electric of Immortality, so when our rats do get killed off, we get to shuffle them all back in. And then the other rats, we've got Blight Belly from the new set, from All Will Be One, um, just because it's got Toxic, and when it dies, it gets to proliferate, so it gives us a little way of getting that, maybe the last cup, uh, last poison counter we need. Burglar Rat, just so everyone can discard cards. Um... Craft Rats is in here just because it's a rat and no other reason for it. We aren't playing the other half of it. We're not playing the Midnight Scavengers. So, you know, you could play it with that. But I've decided against it because it only turns into an Eldrazi horror. But I decided to just play the rats. Um, there you go. At the beginning of your combat on your turn, if you own both of them, you get to transform it. But it's a 2-1 rat for 2 mana, so I decided to risk it. The Zoomy Cutthroat's in. It's got Fear, um, which is an unusual ability to see nowadays. It's not one you see that often. For those of you who don't know what Fear does, it just means this can't be blocked except by artifact and or black creatures. It can't block itself, but it does mean you get in for two every so often for something. The Prowler's in as well, because that's got Ninjutsu. Um, and you might as well Ninjutsu this in, you know, if you get in with this, because, you know, it's got Fear. Get in with this, you're going to make it three. So, you know, all good fun. Piper of the Swarm. Give all our rats menace. Yes, it's a human warlock, so it's not a rat, but it does produce rat tokens, and, you know, you can sacrifice three rats to gain control of a target creature. 
We've got a lot of rats in this deck, so it should work with a bit of luck. Rancid Rats, again, just so it is a case of having a bit of a death touch thing on the back, so we got a bit of defense in the early game. Ravenous Rats, so just it was the original rat, and I figured having someone discard a card could be fun. Rotting Rats, um, enters the battlefield, each player on Earth um, discards a card, and we've got the Unearth ability, so, you know, that does mean we discard one as well, by the way, just bear that in mind. Rune Rat is in as well, um, exiles a card when it dies from an opponent's graveyard, it's got death touch, so we can't complain. Skull Snatcher for the Ninjutsu ability, and we can exile a couple of cards from a player's graveyard, uh, which could be relevant in the moment. Um, Tribute Hirobi's in as well. Yes, it gives each opponent a rat token and our thing, but, you know, we get them back when it transforms, so, hey, might as well have it in. Ultra of Dementia's in here as a potential way of winning the game. Um, you could do a rat mill deck with this, and the reason we can do a rat mill deck is just coming up in the three drop, and you've probably already worked it out. So, bear this in mind, all sorts of dimensions here. Chittering Skittling is also in. Um, hopefully we will get three poison counters um, on an opponent at some stage, which means we can sack our creatures to draw cards. So, you know, it's only once per turn, but, you know, um, it's fine. Crypt Rats, just to control the board a little bit. Um... You can basically nuke the board if you need to. Destroys you know, X damage to each creature in each player. Yes, protection from black cards stop it, but hey, it's a little bit of fun. Ickle Rats, just for more infect side of things. And you know, when it comes into battlefield, each player gets poison counters. That does help you start things off nicely. The Moon Sage is in, so I decided to go back to Kamigawa, um, Neon Dynasty, sorry, and go with this one, just with a bit of a ninjutsu um, action. And yeah, if we can nick someone's card off the top of their library, all the better for us. And then the reason we have Altar of Dementia in here, um, Ravenous Rats. We have a lot of copies of Ravenous Rats. Um, I believe I'm sitting around 20 at the moment. I've cut, I did start, you know, if you watched the end of the stream video where I did this one, I did have start with more, but I think I've cut it down a little bit. I don't think we need that many. Um, but they're all here. I've also gone with Aria First of Lockway, and again, it's not a rat, but it's an elf noble, and black creatures entering the battlefield mean you drain one off everyone and you gain one. So, you know, lots of rats coming to play, made it worthwhile. Chittering Witch, again, just for the um, rat token creation we get. Um, into the battlefield, create a number of rat tokens where equal to the number of opponents you have, and you can sack a creature to give something minus two, minus two. So, you know, not the end of the world. Dead Revels, just to return a couple of cards to our hand. And if we get some damage in, we can pay it for the spectacle cost. Um, the other Ambusher from Kamigawa and Neon Dynasty is in as well, just it's got lifelink. So, you know, and, you know, getting in with a rat and then ninjutsuing this in for three and gaining three is not the worst plan in the world. Damnation's here to control the board along with Blood Money. Um, Blood Money's got the upside against the treasure tokens, but Damnation may be needed. I have got the other half in. I did put Midnight Scavengers in. Okay, my bad. I didn't think I had done. I thought I'd taken it out. But hey, okay. So we can do the um, trick and combine everything. Throat Slitter. Um, destroys target. Deals combat dash for player. Destroy target non-black creature that player controls. A nice one to ninjutsu in when you can do it. You know, it's one of the reasons we have things like Nykthos and Kabel Coffers in so we can hit the mana. I've chucked in Lolf, the Spider Queen, just for the card draw side of it. Um, yeah, the Menace creatures are quite nice and the Emblem's quite nice as well. Um, we can do it that way, which is quite cool. But, you know, it's really for the card draw. When we sack a creature, we can obviously, or when a creature dies, we get to put lawsuit counters on it. So we can build up quite quickly with this queen, queen in play. Maronor is in as well. Gives all our rats fears. An older card going back in the days to the original dynasty. Um, there you go. Champions of Kamigawa. Going back to where they first came in. And we can sack a rat and create X11 black rat creature tokens where X is the number of rats we control. So, you know, a lot of creatures coming up. Ogre Slumlord, again, another non-token creature dies. You get a rat creature token, and rats you then have control, have death touch. So that makes it very difficult to block them. Okobi Gang Shinobi, um, ninjutsu way, get to do some discarding with the player. Coat of Arms is the win condition. You don't want to play this until you can alpha strike and make sure you're going to literally take out your opponent no matter what they've got and no matter what their thing is. Obviously, if they're playing a tribal deck as well, you want to not play this at all because it may be their creatures will be bigger, but hey. And obviously, if we're playing Relentless Rats, we've got to play Thrumming Stone to make sure they've all got Ripple. Now, 
Thrumming Stone is the reason Vampiric Tutor's in here, because if I've got a couple of Relentless Rats in my hands, I will be Vamp Tutoring for Thrumming Stone to get that ready for the next turn, cast that, and hopefully cast some Relentless Rats using the mana from the Coffers, the Stronghold, the Shrine. Um, that's why, yes, the only reason it's here. And also, I had to play one more Legendary Rat, and that's Ink Eyes. I just like Ink Eyes, you know, nick someone else's creature card and put it onto Battlefield Energy Control, and the regenerates really nice. Yes, it's only getting Ninjutsu once, but hey... Once may be enough to get you the biggest creature you've chucked, got someone to discard during the game. Blood Money I've always men already mentioned. And the final card in the deck, Rise of the Dark Realms. If we do have to sack all our rats off to Altar of Dementia, we can then go, let's do it this way. And get them all back in play again and sack them all off again. You should, with the amount of Relentless Rats in play, um, you should be able to mill your opponents out quite happily. There is one last card down the bottom here, which I don't think I talked about, Phyrexian Altar, just so we can sack creatures off and gain some mana if we need it. Um, it's quite a nice little combo with the Rise of the Dark Realms because it is nine mana to do this one. And you can sack off some of your weaker rats to um, bring everything back. So yeah, that's the deck in a nutshell. Um, you could put Ashnod's Altar in as well. I did think about it. It's sitting up here, as you can see. Um, I'm moving an R ring. And you know what? I don't really want to do the melding thing, so I am going to drop this out. I am going to put Ashnod's Altar in, just to give us that extra bit of mana that we might need. So that's it. That's the deck. Um, but this is the first so like real deck tech. I know I've done a couple before. You know, the Atraxa video, the LS Norn video. I need to go back and look at them now. I've seen the full set. But this is going to be the first one for a while. So I hope you enjoyed this short one today. Um, look out for tomorrow. There'll be some more surprises coming up. I'm going to get this one sorted out. So thanks for watching. And, you know, make sure you've hit the like and subscribe button. And I will see you, hopefully, on Twitch soon. Links down below. Come and give me a follow over there. Take care, everyone. See you all soon. Bye.